Enfoque y Conversión tuvo el privilegio de conversar con David Lutenberger, probablemente una de las personalidades más calificadas del mundo en innovación de empaques. David es un auténtico veterano de nuestra industria, con más de 24 años de experiencia, y hoy ocupa la posición de director mundial de empaque de la prestigiosa agencia de inteligencia de mercados Mintel. Con un impresionante recorrido por la industria mundial del empaque, David ha ocupado posiciones tan destacadas como editor en jefe de la revista Package Printing and Converting de los Estados Unidos, jurado líder del premio Dupont a la innovación mundial en envases y creador de la primera conferencia sobre envases sostenibles de los Estados Unidos en 2003, todas posiciones que le han dado el merecido reconocimiento de líder de opinión en empaques. Con David dialogamos acerca de sus visiones sobre lo que significa innovar en envases hoy, sobre su concepción actual de los empaques y su responsabilidad medioambiental y acerca de algunos insights de los consumidores sobre los atributos que un buen empaque debe tener, entre otros. David será uno de los conferencistas en la primera cumbre latinoamericana de innovación en envases plásticos que tendrá lugar del 1 al 2 de marzo próximo en Ciudad de México. Thank you so much for accepting this interview with Ellen Pack and Conversion. It's a mm. pleasure to have you. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You end up in the packaging industry as a top leader of, of packaging. Mm. How how that happened? How did I get from one <laughs> to the other? Uh, I applied for a job at a publishing company in Philadelphia. And it happened that they had an opening for our chief editor, his package printing and converting magazine. And I just found it to be fascinating to see how they printed labels and how they converted boxes and materials. And then I began to wonder, okay, well, after we make this label, how does the label get on the bottle? You know that. So my my interest in the was always in the next step. Well, here's how it's made. Here's how it's converted. Here's how it's printed. Here's how it's applied, and then it just kind of it just progressed. I wanted to understand well why do brands do this type of label or this type of package versus another one? Uh, how do packaging companies? How do brand owners? How do they support the innovation? How do they know which packages and, and which products to introduce? So I went back to school and I got some certifications in packaging. I had I had done some design work previously, and One sort of job and one opportunity in packaging just led to another. I had an opportunity uh, to lead packaging strategies for about 10 years. Yes. And I really learned there the business and the innovations of packaging and how you had to be able to run a good business to support packaging innovation. And your packaging innovations had to produce results. They had to connect with consumers to be able to support your business. Yes. And then I began to wonder, well, how do consumers choose which product to buy? And so that's when I began to, to understand consumer insights. And I was recruited from Packaging Strategies to another market intelligence firm, and I helped them build their, uh, their packaging practice. Years ago, probably in 2000, I'd had a relationship when I ran Packaging Strategies. I allowed the, uh, the people from Mintel to come to my packaging strategies conferences and show their products. And I even helped them develop the first packaging database for Mintel, which is now called the Global New Products Database. So I had a past relationship with Mintel. Uh, recently an opportunity became available and they wanted, Mintel wanted to really accelerate their client interaction into packaging, to bring packaging into that fold of consumer insights. So they created a, a position of global packaging director. And since then, we've been able to sign, I think we've got all 10 of the top uh, global packaging converters as clients. We're now beginning to get into that second tier of packaging converters. We have uh, machinery manufacturers, we have materials, components, systems, Uh, additives, uh, clients now as packaging because they understand that there's a lot of great packaging technologies and innovations out there, but if they don't develop them with the consumer in mind, mm -hmm. then it's just R&D. It's, it's innovation without a, without a home, so they need to understand what their brand owner clients are looking for mm -hmm. and really develop innovations that meet those consumer needs. So over the past 25 years, it's just been this progressive evolution of, of me learning and you know continuing to learn more every day. And I, I still consider myself to be a student, a student of the packaging industry because there's always more to learn. And the more I get to travel all over the world, I can apply lessons I learned in Europe 
to projects we work on in Latin America or things I learn about the Latin American consumer that we may be able to help our Indian clients with. So it's, it is a global packaging, a global product community, and that's what Mintel does. We try to connect all those little disparate pieces of innovation, of technology, of consumer insights, of branding, of retailing, of marketing, and we bring them together to create solutions that consumers really need. So it's just been this step-by-step -step, you know, progression over the years. Thank you, and with that um, research that you've done in Minto, what could you tell us are the top five attributes that uh, consumers identify a good packaging solution must have? I think probably the top thing that it really needs to do, it needs to solve a problem for a consumer. It needs to address a need that they have. Mm -hmm. That's where my packaging team at Mintel, we've really identified what we call solutions-based packaging. I'm sure you've heard for years about chaotic packaging, disruptive packaging. And what we say is you can put a great package on the shelf that's very different, but if the consumer doesn't understand why it's different or what that difference means to their life, then it is just a disruption for their life. But if your package that you put on the shelf can answer the question, our package makes consumers' lives, and then I say you fill in the blank. Does it make their life easier? more convenient? Does it make them feel safer? Does it make them feel like uh, they have more confidence in their purchasing decision? So it has to address a consumer need and bring added value to the consumer's life. It can be a great package for your company, but the consumer doesn't always care what's good for your company, they care what's good for them. So we try to help our, our converter clients, our designer clients, retailers on the private label side, our brand owner clients, begin and end their new product and package development process by answering that question, what does our, our package do to make consumers' lives better in some way? Yeah. You've traveled around the world, uh, David, and do you see in Latin America there are particular trends that are more evident or clear in regarding packaging? I think what I've seen here just this week and from the previous times that I've been here, but more so right now, I think the Latin American brands are looking for packaging that's both economical but is still functional mm -hmm. and that they can bring products to maybe the lower income class uh, of the society here to give those people access to products that maybe the more privileged consumers have. And I think there's a real focus on doing that, on giving access to, to all, all income classes, all levels of people here. Um, and they're trying to look for packaging that is still very functional, mm -hmm. but where they can maybe cut some procurement and material cost to be able to, to bring those products, whether it's health and beauty products or medicines or just basic, you know, fortified milks, uh, waters, those sorts of things. And I've been, I've been very impressed with that. How does Mintel go deep in the, in the needs of the end users? How do you research and really learn what they need? Mintel has many, many tools. We have our, our custom consulting platform. We have our reports platforms. Um, but what we really do is we talk to consumers. I mean, we publish reports on, on food, on beverages, on household, on pet products. For every report that we write, yes. we interview between 1,800 and 2,000 consumers. Mm -hmm. And we ask them, what's motivating and driving your purchasing decision? Is it influenced by packaging? Is it influenced by the number of children you have in your household, by your income, by your geography? So we really speak to the consumer and we find out not only what they like, but sometimes what they don't like. And then that's how we come up with our insights and we, we trend spot all over the world. Mm -hmm. We have 300 analysts like myself who are you know, experts in our category, who are around the world. We have experts who are writing our reports who have worked in the food industry. Uh, we have food scientists. So the expertise that we have, we bring all those pieces of information, all those things we see and hear and learn in our surveys that we do in our research, and we bring all those pieces together and we don't just hand it to our clients and say, here, here's all our research, now you try to make sense of it. We use our expert analysts as well and we say, here's the research, 
and here's why it makes a difference. Here's what it means. Here's how you can make it actionable. And we lead them down a path that then allows them to make the best decision based on the project that they have. Wonderful. And with all this research, how much can you say really a packaging influences purchasing decision? Uh, we're seeing today that packaging has a much greater influence on the purchasing decision. What I like to say is when product price and perceived product quality are equal, that's when packaging can be that difference maker. That's when packaging can motivate and drive that purchasing decision because consumers today are what we call non-brand tied. I mean, they're not necessarily loyal to any one brand. Yeah, right. So if your brand is the same price as this brand, and I perceive the quality of each to be about equal, but if this brand has a reseal feature and this one doesn't, why would I not buy the one that's the same price, but I know that I can gain the benefit of resealability, which means my product, or my, my food, or my medicine, or my drink, or even my cosmetics are going to stay fresher longer. That means I'm going to be saving money. There's that, that element of thrift, of value. And that's how we really see our insights helping you know, all of our clients is, it's not just what is this, but why is this happening, and what's the implication, and how can you put action against that? You were one of the first persons in, Amer in the Americas that mm -hmm. conceptualized and, and, and launched a sustainable yeah. packaging sem seminary back in 2003. How much, how much has the concept of sustainable packaging changed or, evol or evolved from that time? I think it's, it's changed, uh, it's 180 degrees in a different direction. Uh, when it first came out, everybody was caught up in, I have to have sustainable packaging, mm -hmm. and sustainable packaging only means using a biopolymer. Yes. And it's evolved into, well, maybe there's a more responsible way to use plastics or glass or paperboard. And so we began to think about environmental responsibility more holistically, mm -hmm. rather than just sustainable packaging. And even though I created the Sustainable Packaging Forum, I really no longer like to use that term sustainable packaging because it's not just about packaging, but it's about the process. It's about responsible sourcing, responsible production. It's about giving consumers a feeling that you are doing something to help preserve and protect the environment. Consumers today, and this is from Mentel Research, we know consumers put more of an emphasis or an onus on big brands to do more to preserve and protect the environment than we as individuals feel that we can do ourselves. So that has caused the brands to be able to think in a bigger picture. It's not just about packaging, but again, it's about you know responsible production. It's about how much energy am I using to produce, to distribute? Is there a way to collect and reuse, recycle, repurpose our packaging is just part of the bigger picture.